Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode we're going to be solving a fluid transport practice problem. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. It really helps our channel. So please, um, you know, make sure to pause the problem so that you can copy the instructions and follow along. The problem that we're going to be solving in this video goes as follows. So we have a venturi tube and air is flowing from the left to the right at 12 meters per second at point number one. The area at points 1 and 3 is 10 centimeters uh, square. The area at point 2 is 3 centimeters square. The tube has a resistance of 4.5 times 10 to the 3 uh, joule second meters to the 6 between points 1 and 2, and the exact same total resistance between points 2 and 3. The first thing that we have to answer is how fast is the air moving at points 2 and 3? So as you can see, I have everything written down here in my notes. So I have a little picture and I have all of the information. The first thing that we have to find out is, um, so we are given a velocity over here, which is 12 meters per second. And we have to find basically the velocity over here and the velocity over here. So let's just go ahead and do that. For starters, this problem is telling me that these areas are exactly the same. And because area is the only indicator for velocity in the Bernoulli equation, if the areas are the same, then the velocities are the same. Another way to look at it is if you think about the continuity equation, what goes in has to go out, then this means that A1B1 is equal to A3V3. And if the areas are the same, then that means that the velocities must be exactly the same, right? So this is uh, very straightforward and B3 is just, we don't really need to calculate anything. This is just 12 meters per second final answer. Now, obviously this is not gonna be a straightforward over here because we do have a change in area. However, we can still use our continuity equation because uh, whatever water or air goes um, through here, it's uh, air. So whatever air is moving through here must also cross this section over here, right? So the, uh, the continuity equation is also gonna apply from here to here. So what this means in terms of equations is that what goes through one also passes through this chunk right here. This means that area one, velocity one, should also be equal to area two, velocity two, because we need continuity here, here, and here. This is the exact same tube, and this is the exact same air flowing from left to right. Um, so we have these two, and we can figure out these two. So V2 is equal to area one, velocity one, divided by area two. So area one is, 10 centimeters squared. I'm not gonna change that to SI units because I'm going to divide these two so the units are gonna get canceled anyways. Um, V1 is equal to 12 and then this smaller area is equal to three. This canceled the units so there was no need to change the SI units. So uh, this is going to be equal to um, just 120 divided by three, so this is equal to 40 meters per second, which makes sense that this should be greater than this, because if this is smaller and you need the same amount of air flowing over here, then it needs to go faster because otherwise you're just going to be, you know, where is it going? So the smaller the area, the faster it needs to go. So final answer, 40 meters per second. Another quick thing before we move into the next part of the problem is that if you actually draw your flow lines, which is something that you don't necessarily have to do, but it is also helpful. So as you can see over here and over here, uh, your flow lines are closer to each other over here and they are more separated from each other over here and the closer they are to each other, then that means that the velocity is going up. Now, in both cases, you have the same flow because you have the same amount of flow lines. You have four here and four here, 
but these ones are closer to each other, which means that the velocity is going up. All right, so moving on to the next uh, to the next part of the problem over here is what is the pressure difference between points two and three, which is at a higher pressure? Okay, so B is what is the pressure difference between points uh, two and three? So at this point, we really have to use our Bernoulli um, equation. So let's just go ahead and do that. So this problem is telling me to use my Bernoulli equation from point two to point three. So let's just go ahead and crunch those numbers. So my complete Bernoulli equation, I'm just gonna write it down. There we go. So let's see. Delta P is gonna stay, obviously. This is what we wanna find and I'm never gonna cancel that out. Uh, this term is going to go away because I don't really have a change in height. Points 2 and 3 are leveled up. So because I don't have a change in height, this is equal to 0. Uh, this term is going to stay because I do have a change in area. So let's just go ahead and do this. Um, this term is going to go away because I don't really have a pump in between these two points. So this is equal to 0. And this problem is, yes, we do have a resistance. It's over here. So this is equal to just negative IR. So this is what we want to find. So let's just go ahead and push this to the other side of the equation. So this is um, negative IR negative one half rho del B squared. So let's just start putting some numbers here. So I is the flow rate. So how we get the flow rate is just basically by definition. So the definition of flow rate is just I is equal to AB. So you can just take either points two or three, both of them are gonna work obviously. So if we work with point three, but again, it really doesn't matter if you choose this or this. Uh, so your flow rate is area times velocity. If I'm using A3, I need to make sure that I use this area and this velocity. So this area is equal to 10 and this velocity is equal to 12. So my flow rate is going to be equal to 120. All right, so this is equal to 120. So now, um, Oh no, wait. Uh, here it goes. So this 10 over here is centimeters. So I need to change this uh, to meters because if I don't do this, then this is not going to be an SI unit, but all of these are in SI units. So I do need to change this. So let's just change this to SI units. Um, then centimeters cubed. Uh, centimeters squared in SI units, I just have to divide by a hundred. So this is 0 0.1. No, I need to divide this two times. So let's see. Yeah. There we go. So this is the number that I have to use. This is actual SI units. So let's just go ahead and do this. So 0 0.001 times 12. Now this is actually SI unit. So this is uh, 0 0.012 now actually in meters cube divided by seconds. Okay, so maybe this was the hard part of this problem, but now it's done. So this is um, negative. 0 0.012, your resistance is already on SI units, so 4.5 times 10, 3, negative 1 half, draw, this is air, and the density of air in SI units is just equal to 1, and delta B squared, we just need to be mindful that it's final minus initial, so it's um, 3 uh, 0.3 minus 0.2, so this would be 12 squared minus 40 squared like this. So
So let me just put that on a calculator. So let's see. Um, so this is negative 0 0.012 times 4.5 times 10 to the three minus one half 12 squared minus 40 squared and um, 674 so let's see 674 pascals like this final answer now uh, this is 674 so this is the final answer and then part 3 is asking me which is at a higher pressure now if going from 2 to 3 gives you a positive pressure this is final minus initial so that means that P3 is at a higher pressure than P2 because otherwise this would be uh, a negative number so that is how you figure out which one is higher than the other one by just looking at whether this is positive or negative. So anyways, I hope that this video was useful. If you found it useful, please leave a like. It really helps a lot. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to write them down um, on the comments. I do read those out and I'll see you guys on the next video. Okay, just a little note on this problem because I know that this is gonna come up. When I was solving this problem, I wasn't actually looking at, you know, any solutions or anything like that. And I didn't know uh, which values were provided. So over here, uh, the only thing that's different from the solutions is that because I didn't have the actual value of density of air at hand, I just ran it, you know, to one, which is very common. But on the actual quiz that these students were given, they were actually given a specific row for air, which is 1.2. So if you look at the solutions of this particular practice quiz, you're going to see that the solutions actually use 1.2. And if you use 1.2 and put this exact same thing on a calculator, uh, you're going to get delta P is equal to uh, 8. 19.6 pascals which is what the solutions are telling you that it is so i just wanted to point out that um there is nothing wrong with you know getting this number i just wasn't aware that students were given 1.2 instead of the usual one so that might you know if you're working out this problem and you're working out the practice quiz and using 1.2 your answer is totally correct um so just please know that this number is going to change whatever value you get but this is also going to hold true, so this is still true, and everything is still true up to this point. Uh, so I just wanted to just point that out, um, because I know that this tends to confuse people. So anyways, I, this is it, uh, and I hope that this was helpful.